Now, a, a very good friend of mine, and whom I practice in chambers with some time ago, Kweku Agriolens, he practices both in the UK and in Ghana. He wrote an article on Independence Day. Yes. And said, Ghana's parliament has placed an independence bomb on the president's desk. That's the anti gay bill. Mm. With the Supreme Court being called on to hopefully act on the disposal unit. <laughs> That's very interesting, you know. Because, you see, um, we are supposed to function by law. Anything less than that is disaster and aberration. This constitutional dispensation, we should look at it from the perspective of supremacy of law, not the pleasures of men and how they feel. So if something is supposed to be done by the president, by operation of law, you should look at the law, the parameters of the law, and act upon it. Because you can't have uh, a president acting unconstitutional and be comfortable. And so is everybody in the situation, the speaker and even the judiciary. So that's how I see what is unfolding. And I find it very, very, very interesting and in how we need to uphold the constitution and the supremacy of law for our own peace. If not, it could be very, very chaotic. Mm. That's how the little response I was, I was saying to this. Uh, we, we, we all clamor for speedy disposal of suits. Mm. And we say even our system does not encourage investment because mm. suits takes forever. Yes. And people have heard me refer many times to this small family land matter that took 40 odd years to determine. And in 2014, when the Supreme Court eventually finished that case, mm. Chief Justice Wood described it as a parody of justice. Precisely. But will it be fair in the circumstances we find ourselves where one party says, I want the case to be dealt with quickly. Mm. And you are sending notice to the, the one who actually brought the matter. And you are calling them today to come tomorrow. Shouldn't you give them a bit of time? Well, they should be given time if and only if, um, uh, with, the, with the greatest of respect, if not um, um, uh, placed before them their documents. That is all I want to say. You see, let's respect the new dispensation. The new dispensation, with the greatest respect, is not the case that the presence of a human being before a court of law will improve the documents duly filed and the law. Sometimes substantially it does. Well, if and only if there's necessity for the judges to say that um, uh, uh, something, with the greatest respect, can you address us on this? point. That's right. But they can dispense with all that and it's just the paper arguments they'll look at and deal with it. So this is what I'm seeing because in those days that we didn't have um, um, uh, the, the, this new dispensation, you need to be physically present and move a motion and argue and, and edge upon the court all the authorities you believe should make you win your case. And we are told Pitala um Peter Lajet stood on his feet for two days. Yes. Arguing one matter. Precisely. And the court entertained him. Today, they'll give you 30 minutes, even if you're lucky. If you're lucky. If I'm less. Hmm. But right now, the statement of case that you stress, I want to drum it home because the general public should know. They didn't let my lawyer speak. And that is why I've been given an unfair treatment in the court. You see, they want to curtail the tendencies of lawyers speaking for so long, rather than reducing their thoughts together with the law, in very simple terms, called the statement of case. So if my good friend who is complaining about he being short-served, and it depends on the discretion of the judges, that look, in order to give him time, he's not been, I mean, I, been short-served, can we give him two days to return? I don't see how that could hurt a fly. I don't see how that could challenge the processes. And I didn't see um, uh, the emergency that, oh, if the case was not determined now, something serious will happen. 
So for me, in order to uh, um, expand the parameters of fairness, I would say, well, the gentleman uh, is alleging that he's been short served. Uh, can we give him, um, uh, what's it called, two days to come back to us? That will curtail some of these, I mean, um, uh, accusations. In the, of... in the courtroom, mm. it would appear that the judges may have been angered yes. by the testimony of the bailiff. I heard so. Because the bailiff was asked, you were supposed to have served this party to come to court. Have you served? He said, I went to the offices of ADO and ADO legal attorneys, lawyers for Dafia Mapo. When I got there, I was told that the lawyer says, we shouldn't accept any, of, any uh, service well, on this case. Yes. So he dumped it, dropped it, and left. We know now from CCTV footage with an audio mm. that the bailiff was untruthful. But at the time, the court did not have the opportunity to know the other side. Precisely. So they were unhappy that a lawyer would treat a Supreme Court process like that. Yes. And the attorney general actually called on the court to look at that matter as misconduct on the part of the lawyer yes and refer the lawyer for punishment yes so if you look at it from that perspective um it was a bit emotive in not giving the judge the uh, the lawyer the opportunity to come and the facts are showing that indeed it is not the fault of the lawyer but let me tell you that if you pay regard to all the um if you like uh, paradigm shift that dr Muhammad baumia wants to bring to bear in this entire country called ghana going digital. Yeah, you don't need a belief now to bring to the attention of anybody that look, come to court. Because the system could just go via, um, I mean, uh, was Electronically. It? Electronically. And then you have it. You can even have the processes on your phone and the proof of service and the rest of it will be curtailed. But be that as it may, I will say one thing that the NDC should bear in mind. The presence of the lawyer will not improve upon the law by this current dispensation. They can even say that, look, you, nobody should come to court. Don't waste your energies. You will give, you, give them um, a, a date for the ruling. And the rules have changed. Yeah. So we should come to terms with that. But I am even surprised that people are not appreciating the move of the Attorney General. A most egregious error has been committed no dispute about it that the whole house of parliament should be suspended by reason of um, uh, the fact that uh, um, they shouldn't do business there's an injunction it turned out that there was no injunction therefore the confusion that what uh, my good friend honorable the fear uh, had filed impinges on the house looking at the issues of the ministerial nominees who have been vetted for approval, is, is a humongous situation. Ministerial nominees who have been vetted for approval, yes, and which category does not include those he has concerns about. Yes. Because those he has concerns about, he wants the court to compel the president to bring them for vetting. Precisely. The president is not bringing them for vetting. Yes. So therefore, if you have a serious attorney general, and I believe we have one, who, who went into the situation and advised the speaker on the matter. I have the letter here. I don't, want, I don't believe we should go through all these matters. Now look, it is not the case that there was any injunction pending. The speaker was trying to be law-abiding in a vacuum. There was nothing pending. And even if anything was pending, if you pay regard to what my good brother filed, I have it here, the issues are materially different if you look at his reliefs. So I don't see why anybody should fall there. Except the that his reliefs included an interlocutory injunction yes. against the vetting of even those who do not form, fall in the category that he was against. The, the absurd, absurdity is monstrous, to be very honest, that if your, the, the, the substance of your case, you know, 
should uh, uh, invent another area which is not related to your case and frustrate it, then the mischief should be punishable. That's how I see it. You see, because you can't play games with the court. And, and by extension, you cannot use your technical skills, you know, to even deceive parliament. It's a very, very serious matter. Mm. And if the attorney general wants to, if you like, remedy the wrongs, and he wants uh, the case head uh, expeditiously, and fairness and the rest of it, you can talk about. Okay. But essentially, I am of the view that the new dispensation does not require the presence of a lawyer for the case to be improved. So you, you say, for example, which is also correct, yes, that they could simply have issued the hearing notice to them and they will appear, but they will not make any arguments. At all. You just appear to hear your ruling. That's, that's what it can be. So that's... why didn't they take this posture in the circumstance, but rather heard argument from Tadio Sori, representing the speaker, it, it, and also Godfrey Dami? You see, I, I am of the view that um, it was a bit of a charged atmosphere, and it was a bit emotive, because they saw the dropping of uh, the, the lawyer refusing to accept service as an affront to the dignity of the courts. Albeit, the evidence showed up that that was not the case. Mm. So that is what happens. But judges must have the composure not to allow such emotions. I agree with you 100%. The same argument I was making uh, for my very revered speaker, that the letter emanating from the Office of the President should not drive him to that position in which some of these matters occurred. So when we come to places of dignity and responsibility, uh, we should manage our emotions well because okay. the